Hello student, welcome to MV1201 Computer-Aided Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor for figure 7, question 3b. Alright, let's head over to your 2D autographic drawing in your notes. Uh, please refer to page 7-65. Now, the first step when you come about any drawing is to simplify it first. So, the items that needs to be simplified are to remove all the holes, such as this diameter 32, the rib here, any chamfers, and fillets, the R20 fillets and the R15 fillets, and any secondary features, such as this little boss here, and this spline at the back here. And of course, the dovetail shape here. Okay, what's left is actually just a base that looks like somewhat like a T shape here. Okay, please remember when you come about this kind of symbol, okay, it always exists in two in a pair. Okay, it looks like an equal sign. So this means it's just that whatever you see on this side will be mirrored to the opposite direction about this line of symmetry all right so let's begin by drawing just a simple rectangular block here okay and the dimensions are 30 by 150 all right let's head over to your autodesk inventor so this is our final product that we need to achieve by the end of this video Okay, take note, the rib here, there's a flat feature on your design as shown in your 2D drawing. Okay. Now, to begin with, let's go to File, click on New, and then under Matrix Folder, double-click on StandardMM.IPT. Next, Head over to the model browser, click on the plus sign of the origin folder to expand it and left click on the YZ plane, press down the shift key and click on the XY plane. This is to select all three uh, default planes and we like to on switch on these uh, default planes for our ease of uh, modeling. So next, let go your shift key right mouse click and press on the visibility all right so now you have all your three planes being shown in your graphical window so let's refer back into our 2d drawing uh, let's recap we need to draw a rectangle of 30 by 150 so let's start from your xy plane Click on the border of the XY plane, a mini toolbar will, will appear and click on the create sketch. Next, we just click on this two point rectangle and we will draw it somewhat right in the middle between this vertical line. You can press the escape key to exit from the rectangular tool. Now, notice that the sketch are all green. So that means that your sketch is not fully constrained. So if you are to click on it, hold on to it and drag, you can actually manipulate and move the edges or entities around. Okay, even the, the, the end points here, you are allowed to move it around. So we are going to use this default projected origin point Use this as a reference to constrain the midpoint of this horizontal line. Alright, so to do so, to constrain point to point, we will use the coincident constraint. So first, let's click on the original point. And then let's find the midpoint of the bottom line. Okay, it will be represented by a green dot. Once you have selected these two icons, these two points, the two-point rectangle will be constrained right in between 
this vertical line. Right click, press OK. Next, go into dimension. Let's dimension here by 150. Double click your middle mouse key to zoom out. And then for the vertical height, it's actually 30. Now, we will do the extrusion for this. Let's head over to your 2D drawing. The extrusion for this shape itself can be found when we trace it to the front view. So this is your end view. We will do a tracing to the front view. Okay, this is the tracing. Therefore, the full extrusion is actually by 118. Now, click on Finish Sketch. That can be found on the top right-hand corner. And under the 3D Model tab, Create Panel, click on the Extrude tool. Since there's only one profile, Autodesk Inventor will just automatically select it for you. And the next thing for distance A, just enter 118. In this uh, case, the direction of this extrusion doesn't matter. Whether is it flip, whether is it symmetry, uh, really, really depends on preference. So for my case, I will just leave it on default. So press OK. Next. We will start by doing this chamfer next. Okay, this chamfer has a little bit of uh, different to it than usual. So you have a twenty-two mm horizontal, and from the base here upwards, it's eighteen. Okay, so you need to be careful here because if you are going to use the chamfer tool, which you can find here. There's this option for two distances chamfer. So let's try. Let's uh, let's say we put the distance one as twenty-two, and distance two as eighteen, as shown from your drawing. Okay, we click the edge, and then we can flip it around to see whether it's the correct direction. And then once we are happy with it, we can press OK. Now let's do our measurement in inventor itself so we can press the m key on your keyboard it will call out the measuring tool now we will click on this vertical height vertical face and then click on this edge here okay so right away you will notice that they measured it as 22 so this is correct this is what we want now click outside of the model area to reset the measuring tool now let's click on this horizontal face and to this edge it should show 18 however instead of 18 it shows 12 so if you notice okay let me press the escape key to exit from the measuring tool if you notice our chamfer here we have accidentally placed the wrong dimension be it because it's actually 22 this length and actually 12 vertically however in our drawing it shows the opposite instead of 12 it shows 18 so in our case here we are not allowed to use the chamfer tool because it's not possible for us to get the 12 here because uh, due to uh, design intent we have to use the dimensions given in your drawing itself so let's undo it to remove it for this case, we will just use, we just draw a line about this face and then we will extrude cut all the way through. Uh, one thing to point out, in this chamfer tool also, once you are using two distances, you are only allowed to select one edge at a single time. So if you see here, I cannot uh, have multiple selection. On the other case, you are using the first option, the distance chamfer. We can actually add many many selections to the to, to to add our chamfer. So that's another point, just for your general knowledge. All right. So please click on this face, create a new sketch. Now go to line, 
and now we will draw a sloping line across here and here all right let's begin let me zoom in a little bit so take note uh, when you are doing this, the selection of uh, points okay placing the points you might come across where the, the point itself is green in color please remember this is by midpoint so when you have if you accidentally selected this uh, unknowingly your sketch might be fully constrained with one lesser dimension and then yeah you you will get nervous because you cannot add the the, the 18 mm here okay so at all times if you have two dimensions shown in your drawing please do not click on the green dot because that is uh, adding one constraint to your sketch okay make sure it's just a yellow dot left click once and then let's go to the top edge here and then we will click once more let's repeat on the opposite side here and yellow dot not green dot left click once more now we will add dimensions from this slanted line we can actually just click the line and we can go vertically up or horizontally down okay so we can have the different dimensions uh, two ways so let's say here horizontally is 22 and vertically from this point to the bottom edge here it's 18 now if you see here and refer back to your drawing we have achieved the required required dimensions as given now let's repeat the dimensioning on the other side again 22 so instead of typing 22 we will just click on the original edge here to reuse the dimensions given here and the bottom edge here and then click on the first dimension of 18 and you can press enter or press this tick button click on finish sketch and click on extrude tool select your profiles so this will have two profiles here and this time under output click on cut and we would like to cut through all to remove as much material all the way through and press ok great we have just done the chamfer next let's do this dovetail this dovetail design is actually at 60 degrees and this longer horizontal line is actually at 36 now we do not know the height from this view so from this end view since there's no more information we will start to trace it to your other views okay for this case we will start tracing it to the front view let's trace it now and if you notice it comes about this 15 here okay let's just double check the tracing okay so this dovetail goes through all the way through the base so we have 60 degrees 36 mm and also the height of 15 same thing we will start from this face to create your new sketch now go to line let's draw the rough shape of the dovetail okay you will get this shape next let's dimension them this is 36 and the height is 15. lastly let's add the 60 degrees dimension now right click press the ok to exit from the dimension tool our sketch is still green partially green so the next thing to do is just click hold and drag your sketch it moves sideways but not vertically up or down okay so what we are missing is actually by adding a midpoint here to this here now click on coincident find a midpoint and select this right click press ok to end the constraint and again our sketch here is still moving 
okay if you click on the line itself it doesn't move but always double check again go to the end points or the small small entities here click and hold and drag and then you will notice that it moves around okay in this case since it move around we need to add a symmetry constraint click on it select the outermost lines and then lastly we will select the line of symmetry which is this vertical pin now our sketch has been fully constrained press the finish sketch again we will perform the extrude cut through all so click on extrude tool select your profile and click on through all and press ok but in this case I have forgotten to click on the cut boolean so let's click on edit click on cut and press ok now let's refer back to your 2d drawing if you notice our base is almost complete we have done all the cutouts from one of the view however if you refer to the plan view we still have this small cutout here so since uh, at the beginning of the lesson i already mentioned that this is actually a mirror symbol okay so to draw this shape a rectangular shape we need to draw twice one at here and one at the opposite direction and the dimensions for this are actually if we trace it down to the front view it's 65 and on the end view is actually 58 now to do so we will rotate our our view from the bottom face here we will create a new sketch select the two point rectangle at this corner here make sure there's a green dot there and then we will move it downwards same thing for the opposite direction okay take note do not select this uh, projected edges that have uh, that inventor has already projected for you automatically the reason because that edges belongs to this okay if you are to snap it on to that uh, feature itself then you might not be able to add further dimensions to it all right so to prevent any uh, errors in the future just make sure that you do not uh, pay attention to the entities that are automatically projected by inventor and try to understand what is it for if best avoid them okay so i did not select onto this projected edge next let's add the dimension so dimension here from here to here let me just rotate my view first so that's easier to refer so this dimension here refers to this dimension here so that is 65 and we have one more dimension here to here that is 58 okay now our sketches are still green if we click on the line itself the green lines it can move up and down what we need is actually this line and this line to be symmetry about this uh, horizontal line here okay let's do a symmetry constraint click on symmetry select the two edges that you want them to be symmetry about and select the line of symmetry but for this case it's much different from our line of symmetry that we applied beforehand for now we cannot select the line of symmetry at all the reason is because we have not done a project geometry yet okay this plane doesn't exist in the current sketch that we have so don't worry right mouse click press ok to exit from the uh, constraint now we will go to project geometry 
click on this axis and go back to the symmetry constraint again these two edges and lastly select the line of symmetry okay you will be presented by this symmetry symbol across right so it's fine your sketch is all fully constrained and click on finish sketch click on extrude and we will do an extrude cut here so under boolean change to cut and we will cut through all and press ok all right we have somewhat finished our base okay so th this is the uh, main portion of it now let's go into your 2d drawing and analyze what snakes all right let's begin with this diameter 50. the reason why we should conquer this diameter 50 is because after that we can start with this spline at the back here because this spline is related to this diameter 50 because it's tangent to one another so let's begin with diameter 50 we will extrude it by 60 and the height of this diameter 50 feature or boss is 118 okay take note for this diameter 32 it should not be sketched together with this diameter 50 even though you can just do that and extrude it's much simpler but anything that uh, is identified as a whole for design intent you are to use the whole tool in autodesk inventor to create this shape itself all right so please take note on that so let's go back to inventor we will go from the real side here okay why is it it's because your diameter 50 actually is aligned or it starts together with this back end back face of the base now click on this face create new sketch we will draw a circle and this circle need to be snapped on to this vertical line again this vertical line has not been projected it doesn't exist in your sketch now so before you even draw your circle click on project geometry select the vertical axis or the vertical plane and we can draw the circle now if you notice this projected edge is maroon in color now once it's snapped on it will get highlighted okay see the subtle change in the lines there once it has snapped on successfully left click once and then apply the circle there next add your dimensions here to the base 118 press the tick diameter 50 and we can perform our extrusion now finish your sketch click on extrude select the sketch itself for this case we need to flip your extrusion to the opposite side and then we can enter there 60. okay let's preview it for a while and once we are happy with it press the ok key great now let's do the spline at the back here like i mentioned just now the spline is actually this this backbone here is actually tangent to the diameter 50 here okay so that's quite easy we will start again from the rear side create a new sketch and this time we will just draw a two point rectangle from here till the base here okay right mouse click click on ok now the line are still green click hold and drag okay so this edge and this curvature must be tangent to one another so click on tangent select here and here let's perform on the opposite side the similar task here and here okay and lastly if you notice this green line this horizontal line is still green so right mouse click press ok click hold and start dragging okay what we need to do is actually just 
snapping on this line to the center point of the diameter 50 circle. So quite straightforward. To constrain a point to a line, we are using the coincident constraint. Okay, coincident constraint. So click on it, select the point, select the line. And we have ourselves the spine of the body there. Click on finish sketch and extrude now. Select your profile. Okay, by selecting the sketch, let's shift it to the opposite direction. But once we have done so, Inventor thought that we would like to cut or remove material from it. Please remember to change the Boolean to join to add material to it. And the thickness here is actually 16. And press OK. Great. Our model is getting yeah, to shape now. Now, we are left with the rib here. Okay. And the diameter 32 hole. Okay. We are almost there. And of course, lastly, we just add uh, the necessary fillets here and there. So let's do the rib first. Let's conquer the rib. So when we are doing the rib, the shape, the cross-sectional shape of the rib is here. Okay, and this has a dimension from the front of the base to the edge of this rib at 24 mm. Okay, so this is the only clue we have. And it starts from the point here all the way down. Now referring to your end view, you notice that the rib itself is has a thickness of 16 mm, but it joins the diameter 50, okay, right at this edge here rather than tangent to it. Okay, so take note of this. Because of this, we need to create a flat on the diameter 50 edge, the, the, the diameter 50 feature first. To accommodate for this uh, flat on the rib here. Okay, let me zoom out for a while. Let's go to Inventor and click on this surface and create a new sketch. We will draw a line from here to here. So click on line, select this and to the opposite side, make sure you are touching the curvature and left click to apply it. Now we have a green line, we just need to dimension them. Click on dimensions, click here and apply 16, the thickness of the rib. Finish your sketch and use uh, perform a extrude cut here. The amount here uh, it's not so critical we as long as it doesn't cut throughout the backbone of the body here okay so let's click on remove boolean okay we just need a little bit of removal here and press ok so this flatness here on the curve surface will be used to create our rib now click on this vertical plane here and create a new sketch. Go to line. Using this flatness here, okay, find a green dot that you can snap on. Left click once and then left click once more. And we just need to add the dimensions of 24 mm. So click here from this vertical height. Okay, find the dot. If we can't, right mouse click, select others, click on this drop down menu and click on point now press your f7 key to slice your graphics to slice your model let's highlight any projected edges that you have and change them into construction mode okay you can either click on this icon here on the top right hand corner or you can just right mouse click and select construction okay so this will tell inventor that only this edge will be used for the creation of the rib finish sketch go to your rib tool okay the profile has been selected if not please select your profile 
click on this second option here parallel to sketch plane and then if yours doesn't show any preview just swap over the direction of the solid body okay for mine on first try the body the preview has shown already so let's change the thickness to 16 mm and press ok let's study your drawing first okay we have a flatness here of 16 mm press the M key on your keyboard to activate the measuring tool and then just click on this horizontal edge here. okay it shows as 16 great and lastly we just need to create a diameter 32 hole so click on hole this diameter 32 hole is concentric to diameter 50 boss so click on this face as your starting surface and click on the cylindrical surface here as your reference to centralize your diameter 6, 32 hole so let's swap this to 32 and ensure that you have selected the true all icon here and press ok ok we are almost there just left with the R15 fillet from here to here and the R20 fillet here and here so let's start click on fillet change the value as 15 enter now click on this edge and since we know where are the edge we can estimate where is it exactly you don't need to rotate your view you can just do uh, select the edge from the opposite side even though it's hidden okay click 15 press ok lastly let's complete the whole model with this r20 so press the fillet key let's change the radius to 20 this time enter and click on these edges one and two and press ok all right we have finished the 3d model for figure 7 question 3b all the best guys see ya